Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Marvel Multiverse role-playing game, the Iron Snow campaign, and we're continuing. So at this point, um, Spider-Man, Green Goblin, Nico Minora, Punisher, um, uh, are all together, and Wong and... Um, and they're all about to go against Dr. Octavius, Mole Man, and the Bactopuses, okay? Um, and at this point, um, Wong returns with Charles Xavier, who has been missing for three years. And he went and was living with the, with the Shi'ar Empire. Uh, he had fallen in love with, um, uh, with the Empress of the Shi'ar Empire, and he had been spending his time there. Right, and um, so he returns, but also at the same time, um, I, I had a talk with a gold player, right? And I, I told the gold player, you know, you're constantly yelling out to the X-Men, hey, stop your war because I think you guys shouldn't war. And I was like, that's kind of, I, I felt as a dungeon master, I'm like, this is, this is kind of silly, right? right? And, but I was wrong. And so one of the things I did before, um, you know, to alleviate that, was I actually had Kitty Pride join um, Green Goblin. So she showed up right before uh, Charles Xavier did and said, hey, I heard you crying for us not to go to war and you were the only person calling for peace and I'm here to make you build that peace, to help you build that peace, right? And so Kitty Pride joins the team that's not a team, right? So Norman Osborn, this Green Goblin guy, he really, he's he, he has these powers, um, but he also is Norman Osborn. He's the CEO of, uh, of, of Oscorp, right? And, um, and, um, he, uh, and he's drawing these people, you know, to him, right? And so Kitty, Kitty Pride joins his group and was an X-Men who was pulled out of the war, right? And wasn't going to be on the pink or the blue anymore, right? And she directly came from the blue. She was supporting Cyclops, right? So at this point, um, Charles Xavier comes through and Nico Minora is like, oh my gosh, that's Charles Xavier. And every, and also Wong is there, but now Dr. Strange is missing, right? And so Nico Minoru says, hey, um, you know, uh, Green Goblin, I can give us some time so that we can catch up because I think there's going to be some catch up needed here for, um, for, to resolve, you know, Charles Xavier coming back to our world, right? And so what she does is she, she, she uses her new powers, okay? So at this point, Nico Minoru is no longer Sister Grimm. And the reason why is she was left in the Sanctum Sanctorum by Dr. Strange in his library um, to hold down the Sanctum Sanctorum and protect it while he and Wong went to get um, Charles Xavier, right? And they were literally going, you know, to a different universe. It is really pretty wild, right? So what she did was she realized the time stone was in the library, right? She, she saw that immediately, right? Well, what she did was she took the time stone and she slowed down time to like uh, 100,000 seconds for every second that was passing. Um, and then she just read every single book. Uh, actually, I think she slowed it down even further than that, like one million seconds for every second that passed. Uh, and just read every single book in Doctor Strange's library. So when she comes out, um, Sister Grimm, Nico Minoru, is no longer Sister Grimm, Nico Minoru. She doesn't even need the Staff of One anymore. She actually is now the Onyx Queen, right? Um, and which, and that's her, that's the new name she takes up and she has all the powers of Dr. Strange, which is convenient because Dr. Strange just disappeared from this world, which is quite interesting, right? So, um, which is really fascinating. So at this point, she opens up a door to, um, she, you know, portal sparks and opens up the door, door to this dark, cold world where there's this roaring fire among a bunch, of, it's dark, it's nighttime. Uh, it's clearly not our own world, right? Um, and it just has an eeriness to it and a silence. 
right? And Nico Minor says, listen, this is one of many worlds that I've found. Um, you know, I, not only did I read all of his, uh, all of his spells, but I use some of them and I've seen that there are many worlds. So this world, in this world, time does not pass on our world. So we can take as much time as we need to plan here, okay? And she also says, and I also want to explain, you know, I have the time stone, right? I am the Onyx Queen. I have all of Doctor Strange's powers now. But I am not going to turn back time. But I will stop or slow time. And I think that's a powerful use of, um, and the correct use of time, you know, of time manipulation. Because I don't want to do time travel, right? So Nico explains that, right? She then opens this world, you know, for them, and they are able to go to go in, and um, and they, they go into this world, and they all just sit around this fire, right? Like, and it's just like a it's a fireside chat. They literally have a fireside chat, right? You know, they're all sitting around the fire, and the first thing that happens is uh, is Kitty Pride tells Charles Xavier everything that's happened. Cyclops is dead. Cable is dead. Um, Havoc is dead. Uh, Psylocke is dead. Um, uh, Angel is dead. Uh, Beast is dead. You know, and that the X Men have really been incredibly. Uh, and that you know, X twenty three stabbed Captain America in the heart, right? And um, and Captain America's in a coma now, right? By the way, uh, so Captain and she tells what happened to Captain America that. The, the doctors were only able to stabilize him um, and he was still dying but Tony uh, Tony Stark came and gave him one of his own machine hearts right and the machine heart saved him and kept him alive but he went into a coma and the reason why was his body was accepting the heart right but he couldn't come out of the coma because it wasn't his own heartbeat and so right now everybody was questing to find the heartbeat of Captain America because they could because it was Tony Stark's heartbeat, right? Which was wrong in Captain America's body. And apparently Captain America's body only functions if it if it's carrying his own heartbeat, right? And so he's in a coma right now, right? And so she's telling, you know, Charles Xavier all this. And then Charles Xavier comes back and he, you know, and so one, then Charles Xavier comes back to the fire and they all start talking together, right? And he says, listen, the reason I left was um, because I realized Cyclops was becoming the leader that, that the X-Men needed. And I no longer was the the, uh, the leader that I, the X-Men needed, needed. And I d genuinely fell in love with the Shi'ar, with the Shi'ar, Shi'ar Empress, right? And I, I wanted to be with her. I wanted to have my uh, love life with her on her planet, right? And uh, he says, and I'm not sure I'm wrong because Kitty Pride has told me, you know, that's a lot of dead X-Men. But right now, all the rest of the X-Men are, are living in a world where mutants are accepted, right? And mutants are no longer a marginalized group. They're actually a privileged group at this point. I thought, I, I, I love that shift, right? Uh, because in our world, we definitely can, we have, we have this terrible thing where we have marginalized groups. They become privileged groups. And we have literally no language to even acknowledge it, right? It's, it's incredible. I, I think there's like three groups in America that are that were very much marginalized groups, are now very much privileged groups, and there's no and and there's no language to discuss it. And you know, so this is one thing we could do in you know in tabletop role playing games, which I thought was interesting. So and so and then he says, you know. I think I was right. You know, this is terrible the way things have happened. But, you know, me and Magneto were fighting constantly. I think that only would have ramped up. And at this point, the world has accepted mutants. If, it, if the cost of that is less than 10 mutant, mutant deaths, I'm not sure that I did the wrong thing, right? Then a uh, Green Goblin is like, hey, can, you can read minds, right? And he's like, yes. And he's like, well, read my mind, right? And so Green Goblin then lets out the full Green Demon, right? You know, and just shrieks at him, man, you left the X-Men. Like, almost 10 of them are dead, right? You abandoned them. You were a terrible leader. And now you can't even really mourn their loss correctly, right? Like, you are a terrible person, right? Like, and you're 100% wrong. You completely failed the X-Men. And 
you suck as a leader, right? And so, and it really kind of unleashes the green demon on him, right? So, and then, uh, you know, um, and then they come back out. And then at that point, um, we've reached, you know, I, I actually, then, uh, Nico Minoru comes up and she says, listen, Green Goblin, we're going to come out of this timelessness in a minute. Here's what needs to happen. One, um, you know, and here, here's what can happen and the different paths we can go on. Me and Punisher and Kitty are with you. We're ready to ride with you, right? And Wong actually says, too, we're, we're, I'm ready as well, right? So Norman Osborn has really built this team around him. But And, and actually, Nico then says, listen, look around you. You've built a team, right? It's me. It's Punisher. It's Wong. It's... Um, it, and it's Kitty Pride, right? You can make your own first team and begin drawing members from the Avengers, who frankly need a leader right now because their leader is in a coma. And you can draw from um, the X-Men, both the blue and the pink, right? And you could form a new super team that would create a new balance in the world. And I believe this would instantly end the blue the blue and the, and, and the pink X-Men war because the X-Men will be irrelevant, right? So with the Avengers, right? You can form a new team right now and um, and upend the balance of power in our world, right? With a new, by forming a new team and drawing from both teams, right? To make a new super, a new super team, right? Which has be the best of both the X-Men and, um, and the Avengers. You've already drawn one X-Men, right? Um, and arguably, yeah, and at, and at times I actually even think, well, I know Punisher worked with the Avengers. I don't know if he ever was an Avenger, right? And then she says, and then also the next thing you can do is you can do what Punisher has been saying to do from the very beginning, which is pick a side in the blue-pink X-Men war and help end it quickly because that will actually save lives. Because if this goes on for years, not only will a lot more X-Men die, but the villains of this world are gonna have a heyday, right? Then the last one is we could go and we could, uh, you know, X, uh, um, Captain America's heart is stopped, right? We could quest to find his heartbeat. As our team, we could probably do it, right? I'm powerful, you're powerful, Punisher is powerful, Kitty Pride is powerful. Wong is powerful. We could do this, right? So we could restore the heartbeat of Captain America. Or we could, or I know you really have want to stay independent and, and you want to keep the scale different. We could go back to New York and to completely secure Queens and then focus only on New York, right? Or finally, we can, um, we can, um, Finally, the last thing we can do is we can fully figure out what is happening with the Green Demons and you, and and complete what cat what um, Spider Man Spider Man explained your powers, but never taught you to control them. We can complete it. We can fully understand your powers, and we can control your powers, right? So we can go on that quest. But we need to decide. These are the quests, and we need to decide which one we're going to do now. And, um, and so Nico lays it out, right? And that's where I'm going to end uh, this video. Um, every single word you just heard is my humble opinion on Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. Uh, Iron Snow season. Um, thank you for letting me share it with you. Uh, the important part is when I get to hear your humble opinion on Iron Snow. Please consider like subscribing and have a fetch millennium.